As the name implies, control charts do just that. They help you take a look at your process and figure out if it's in control or not. But how exactly do they do that? In this lecture, we'll talk about why it's a good idea to have good process control in the first place, and then how control charts can help you identify certain out-of-control process behaviors. When we're looking at variations and process control, we have two causes of variation. The first is chance causes, and so these are just natural variations that can happen. Uh, they are not necessarily uh, serious in nature, they just cause a little bit of random variability in your process. So this is things like time of day and temperature. The temperature naturally fluctuates over the time of day, and so this is somewhat expected. Assignable causes are much larger in magnitude than chance causes. They're also unexpected. So an unexpected chance cause to do with time of day and temperature was all of a sudden, in the middle of the afternoon, for no particular reason, the temperature drops by 15 degrees. The cause of this is readily identified. Maybe a front came through, uh, something like that happened to cause this sudden change in temperature. You can see from the cookies here, that we do have some natural variation in our regular cookies, but we have an assignable cause here for this very dark color, and that's because these cookies are burnt. So we have a readily identifiable cause for the large change in color of the burnt cookies. When you have only chance causes present, your process is considered to be in statistical control. And so your control chart would look at something like this. So you don't have any points outside of your warning or action lines. Everything is reasonably clustered around the process center. You do have a little bit of variation still. No process is going to produce the same thing 100% of the time, but the variation is not large. When you do have an assignable cause of variation, as seen in this point here, and this point here, possibly also in this point here, that may be just random variation that's particularly high, but the assignable cause of variation shows clear out of control behavior. So this is the large change that we can assign a cause to. This is not a good scenario. This means your process is likely to be producing product that is not within specifications. So why do we want to keep our process in control? Well, aside from producing a more uniform product, which is what consumers are expecting, they want to get the same product every single time they go to the store and purchase your product, you can also reduce your inspection costs because if you're monitoring your process on a regular basis, you may be able to take fewer samples. It's also easier to detect problems, especially in the initial period when they first occur, before the problem becomes very large. If you're watching your control chart, you can see your process heading out of control, and you can fix the problem before it becomes major. You can also predict the amount of product having a certain value or a certain amount of a certain attribute. What this means is that when you know your process is in control, the process value is going to be close to the average value. So let's take cereal box weights for example. If you're monitoring cereal box weights and you know the average weight is about 10 ounces, then you can expect your box to be somewhere around 10 ounces in weight. Maybe 10.1, maybe 9.9 .9 ounces, but it should be close to 10 if your process is in control. You wouldn't expect a box to come along and be 12 ounces. That means your process is out of control. So you know the general weight of your box if your process is in good control. It makes your customer auditing easier as well if your process is in control. You have a record, basically, of what your process has been doing for however long you've been keeping this control chart. You can also point out, hey, we're really good at keeping this process in control. We know our temperatures are consistent, our pressures are consistent, our product weights are consistent, our composition is consistent. So it makes it much easier for somebody to come in and get a good idea of what's going on with your process and your product if you have this particular type of record. 
Your process capability also can be obtained from the control limits when your process is in control, when your average is constant over time, when your warning and action limits are constant over time. You can use your control limits to say, my process will produce, for example, cereal boxes with weights from 10.15 ounces to 9.85 ounces. Anything outside of that and something has gone wrong with our process. But that's the natural variation in our process. And that tells you what your process is capable of producing. Note that this may be different from your specification limits, which is a different problem altogether. As we've said, processes out of control have changes due to assignable causes. And so this is either a shift in your variable average, as you can see here, our average is gradually increasing. It can be a shift in your standard deviation, which means your points get more spread out on your graph, as we see here. Or it can be both. So you see in this chart to the far right, our average is increasing and the spread of our points is also increasing. Now this type of change is not always a bad thing. For example, if your average range of your product is going down, that's good. That means your process is getting more consistent. If you have a shift in the standard deviation that is down, that's also good. That means your process is again getting more consistent. But if you have these trends in a value that you want to stay constant over time, that's not a good thing. So in that case, you look for different types of out of control behavior. You're on the watch for those. The obvious out of control behavior is points outside your control limits seen here and here. So that's obviously not a good thing. But your process can still be within the control limits and still show out of control behavior. We have several typical patterns that indicate out of control behavior. Those are change or jump in level. You have a trend or a steady change in the level, so your process average is changing over time. You have reoccurring cycles. You can have two populations on your control chart, or you can just have mistakes. Everybody makes them. So let's take a look at what these patterns look like. This is a change or jump in level. You can see the jump right here. Your process goes from the average being the black line to the average being something higher than that. We're not outside the even the warning limits yet, but this is an out of control behavior. This is typically seen during the initial use of a control chart where we realize just how off our process is and we start making changes. So for example, if we change the temperature by 10 degrees, our process average is going to jump because we've changed our temperature. And so if we're monitoring temperature and we increase it by 10 degrees, of course, we're gonna see an increase on our control chart. We can also see it when we change something uh, about our process. So we get a new operator, for example, who's not trained right. We might see a change in level that will correct itself with training. We might have introduced a different raw material into our process. We might have had a minor mechanical failure. Uh, we might see greater raw material variation. All of those would cause a change or a jump in our process average. Another type of out of control behavior is a trend or a steady change in level as seen here. So what we mean by that is we have a gradual increase upward or downward. So this can be caused by gradual deterioration of equipment, uh, things like fouling or wear. Those can change your behavior. You can have a gradual temperature or humidity change. This is especially apparent um, for temperatures if you measure points over several months. Cooling water, for example, the temperature of your cooling water is much cooler in the winter than it is in the summer. So if you're monitoring your cooling water temperature, you may see a pattern like this if you're measuring in January here and July here. You can also have any kind of unintentional or gradual change to your process. So it may be from wear, it may be from buildup, it may just be things sort of deteriorating over time, but whatever it is, it's causing your average to gradually slide from what you intended it to be. A third type of out of control behavior is recurring cycles. So you see a kind of wave pattern to your data here. 
your control chart looks basically periodic. This can be caused by seasonal changes. So maybe you have a seasonal change in your raw materials, your cooling water, for example, as we said earlier, or maybe you're looking at things like produce. Produce has different quality at certain times of the year. So apples, for example, are probably going to be firmer in September and October than they are in May and June because the May and June ones come from storage. You can also have effects in your operators. So this cycling may be an operator getting tired and then more attent again. So um, you can have things like mechanical events, maintenance for example. You let things go for a while and then you fix them back up. Or you let wear or fouling build up and then you scrub it off. Or you sharpen your tools. Maintenance cycles can definitely cause this. It's not necessarily a bad thing as long as you don't let it go too far. You can use your control chart to actually set your maintenance cycles. You can say, okay, I don't want my process average to go below a certain amount, therefore I need to do maintenance so often so that doesn't happen. Two populations has an interesting look on a control chart. It's not always clear that you have two different populations posted to the same control chart. What it looks like is something like this, and what it means is that you can have a very high variation in your raw materials. You can have very high variation in your test methods or your equipment. So you have high variation in your process somewhere. You can also have, and this may or may not happen with automation, two different people using the same chart for two different things. So if you have one population that has an average here, maybe in a certain mixing tank, and the second mixing tank has an average down here, you've got two different people posting data to the same graph, well, obviously you've got two populations there because you're posting two different pieces of equipment. You want to make sure that you're posting only one equipment's worth of information on one control chart. The important thing with two populations is that you have points that are closer to the warning and action limits on each side of your mean and very few points actually at your mean. So you have the mean at this value because you're averaging your high points and your low points, but you don't really have any points that are close to that mean. So that's what two populations means. Don't be confused with cyclic behavior. This is not cyclic. It's happening too often. So you don't have a reoccurring cycle here. You have different data on the same graph. Another type of out of control behavior and the final type that we'll talk about is mistakes. And so that's what happens when somebody makes a transcription error. They write down the wrong number or they calculate an average improperly. And so you're going along just fine in your process. You've got your points and a reasonable distribution around your mean, and all of a sudden you have this really high point out of nowhere, and you can't find anything that caused it. Every All your logs were correct. Um, nobody was doing anything unusual. You didn't have anything new come into your process. You just have this random point stuck in the middle of nowhere. When that happens and you can't find a reason, check your math. It's probably a mistake. So we've determined now that our control chart is showing out of control behavior. Well, now what? The first thing you want to do is say, okay, I've got out of control behavior, and provided this is not a mistake, we've checked our math, you troubleshoot. So you use your basic quality tools, you use your flow charts, you use fishbone diagrams, you try to lock down, also using root cause analysis, where that problem actually came from. Then once you do that, you adjust your process, keeping in mind that this may cause a jump or a shift on your control chart, to improve the consistency of your process. So you're trying to reduce variation, get your process back into control. The important thing to remember is now that you've found the problem, you've identified your out of control behavior and you're doing something about it, keep monitoring your process. Don't stop doing that. That's what your control chart is for. It tells you is your process in control or out of control. So once you've identified out of control behavior, you fix the process, problem in your process, Keep an eye on your process to make sure it stays in control. And if you do see these behaviors again, then you repeat, 
You troubleshoot, you find the cause, you fix it, and you keep monitoring.